I am Patrick Morgan, CEO of Morgan Scientific, and today it's my privilege to bring to you the finest spirometry solution available on the market today, featuring two of the most remarkable products. The first one is the hardware, which is a pneumatacograph manufactured by Vitalograph called the Pneumatrack. It is a flash style pneumatacograph with incredible accuracy and discrimination. In terms of the ATS26 loops and other standards, it surpasses any other spirometer we have ever tested. It is a flash style that allows for very, very low flow rates indeed and is ideal for the sickest of patients or the smallest of children. The base has a lovely built-in cradle that allows the device to sit into it, so it's very portable. And in cases where there are uh, moisture buildup, there is a simple drip tray at the rear end. The second product that couples with this is our Compass software. Compass Software is renowned throughout the United States and around the world as perhaps the finest pulmonary function suite ever developed. It's been in development and continues in innovation since 1980. So it has an enormous heritage that comes from years of working with America's finest teaching hospitals, asthma and allergy clinics, and pediatric centers. The software is SQL based. It can work with large networks or simple standalone as we're showing you here on a laptop. For asthma and allergy practices that have many offices, it can operate in replication mode, which means to say that it's not held hostage by the network connection speed or connectivity. In replication, tests can be done at the local offices, even if the connection to the main host server has been broken. Compass Software has perhaps the most attractive graphical user interface available. It's simple to use. In fact, it's enjoyable to, to use, and that's what I'm hoping to bring to you today. To perform a quality check, we simply click on the icon and select that we want to run the quality. And for this, we bring in a three liter syringe. The three liter syringe connects directly to the pneumotrack. So it's a very simple and easy connection. From here, we continue on. It reads the flow zero and we're shown a grid which simply records each three litre stroke at different flow rates and as we meet each of the flow ranges they turn green and that confirms the quality check. A single quality check with this instrument will last for the whole day but in fact from the original calibration, a quality check is usually good for over a year. These instruments are so incredibly stable. So now we're going to take you through a sequence of tests so you can see all that the pneumotrack can do. So I have found our test subject. Uh, the test subject uh, is remembered in the database. If it's a new patient, then you would enter, obviously, all of their foundation information, date of birth, and so on. If it's something that's connected to an EMR, we can directly, through orders, recall the patient information from the EMR. In this case, we're simply using a standalone um, computer, so there's no connection to another database. Having entered the patient information, I can confirm the height and weight and go into running a test. The first test that we're going to perform is flow volume loop. And flow volume loops or any volume measurement needs to be corrected for BTPS conditions. Built into the pneumotrack is a temperature sensor to record the room temperature. 
pretty much running the test is so simple with minimal keystrokes. I can simply click to start a pre-bronchodilator test and ask the test subject to breathe normally. So we're watching volume time and flow volume together and I can ask her to take a deep breath in, blast it out, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. A forced expiratory time meter shows how far we've gone and an end of test detection, deep breath in, end of test detection tells me that the subject was completely empty. And clicking or hitting the space bar will record the test. Each test is evaluated for ATS criteria, which is individual effort criteria. A hollow check mark indicates that we've met all of those criteria. To move on, I can simply repeat the test. This time, you'll see on the screen a second meter that will come up once we start the test. So I'll ask the patient to take a deep breath in, all the way in, blast it out, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, and you can see both a forced expiratory time and a volume percent meter, deep breath in. Also, the shadow or a shaded area of the best flow volume loop that they have achieved so far is shown on the screen. Each of these items, meters and shading, are there to help the technician guide them to excellence in testing. Down the bottom, we also have very nice incentive options. By clicking the smiley face, we can engage the incentives. Uh, the first incentive that you will see here is a birthday cake. So we can ask the patient to breathe normally and take a deep breath in. Blast it out. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And the animation of the birthday cake, this one is set to 105%. Deep breath in, all the way in. So you could set up your incentives. You can also have failure animations if you prefer or not. Uh, other incentives include uh, dragons, rocket ships, dandelions. Uh, we'll show the dragon animation, which is quite popular. Um, again, here, um, the animation loads and the patient's just breathing away normally. You need to come off the mouthpiece there, Lindsay, just for a second. If they're breathing before the flow zero has been recorded, it alerted me. So on you go, thank you. And so here we have our dragon threatening the castle. And deep breath in, blast it out. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming all the way out, all the way out. Nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. And deep breath in. And again, the animations are there to encourage. If there is anything that the software sees that is unusual or not meeting ATS criteria, it is presented to the technician so that you can see what was wrong and how to correct it. We've now completed um, two or more flow volume loops that meet both ATS criteria for effort and reproducibility. So a large check mark is presented so that we are clear that we've completed testing. A typical problem that occurs often in labs where technicians are distracted by phone calls and other things is that we've given our patient the bronchodilator and we go ahead and run a test. So here we are running the test. Deep breath in, all the way in, blast it out. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, nearly there, nearly there, and deep breath in. And only now do I realize, oh my goodness, we saved that as a pre-bronchodilator test and we want it to be post. So I can literally drag that effort down and place it into post. So we can correct that mistake. And then to continue testing in post, simply a P key 
will allow us to choose pre or post, or I can click on the little up arrow and I can choose pre, post, or begin challenge. This software will allow challenge testing for methacholine, aridol, exercise, cold air, any challenge protocol that you may have. The Pneumatrack, for a lot of people, that is pretty much all they're going to be using it for, for flow volume loop, and we could end there. But just to show you some of its other capability, we can also do slow vital capacity tests. And here we just ask the patient to breathe away normally. And I'm wanting to capture here at least three or four resting tidal ventilations. They're all nice and reproducible, so I can say take a deep breath in, all the way in and all the way out. Steadily out, 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 out. And a very useful thing is the meter at the bottom of the screen that you can see turn green is indicating the percentage of this vital capacity compared to the best. So we would expect a slow vital capacity to be the same or greater than the forced vital capacity. If the technician wants to change the uh, end tidal position for calculation of expiratory reserve and uh, IC, they can do so. The unit can also do two measures of neuromuscular function. One is MVV, maximum voluntary ventilation, and the other is cough peak flow. We'll start with an MVV, and in this test, we simply ask the patient to breathe deep and hard, so off you go, and we hit the space bar when they're doing so, and we try to get them to go to 12 seconds. I'm gonna deliberately cut it short, just so that you can see that you can stop the test between 6 and 12 and it will extrapolate. So those patients that really run out of gas, so to speak, before the 12 seconds, we can still record an MVV. On the screen, we show the FEV1 times 35 and the FEV1 times 40 compared to the MVV. And in this case, even though I cut it short, her MVV is an excellent effort. So I could accept that and move on. The cough peak flow is becoming more and more popular. It's extremely popular in pediatric centers, but it's being adopted by adult centers now. What you're seeing is flow versus time. And I simply ask the patient to take a deep breath in and cough as hard as they can. Let them relax again and try it once more. Deep breath, cough! And you can see that it's extremely reproducible and there are now predicted values that uh, can be utilized for cough peak flow. Technicians can um, also engage a, a history um, icon here We've got no history on this patient, but the history allows us to look at past tests. We can look at their past flow volume performance and see if they're matching what they've done previously. We can enter in notes. Um, the notes can be pre-configured so that you're not typing the same notes over and over again. And also, the software allows us to enter manual data such as blood gases. We can interface with the non-inristox if your laboratory is used to doing six-minute walks. That's a very elegant solution which automatically downloads the six-minute walk data. At this stage, we've pretty much completed all that we need to do and I can simply click on reports and I can preview, print or save the report as a PDF. The reports within Compass Software are absolutely unlimited. They can be any mix of graphical presentation, numerical presentation that your, you and your colleagues want to have. Furthermore, um, we design the reports 
with no additional cost. With Compass, we recognize that the thing that's changing constantly is software and software innovation. That's particularly true in our company. We have a large team. In fact, over a third of our staff are completely dedicated only to software innovation and testing. So updates are coming frequently, uh, often very exciting updates, and we provide these to our customers. What we request is the customers pay us an annual software license. The license is only equivalent to about three or four complete tests per year. So it's a minimal fee, and for that fee, you get complete support. Uh, the support can be remote support. We're able to log in to your PC, troubleshoot any issues you may be having. We can log in and deliver new report styles or predicted changes. It's very much a support-oriented company, vastly more so than other companies. We do not uh, insist on service contracts, not at all. Both the hardware and the software here are really built for 20 years or more in terms of life experience. So it's a remarkable product. Thank you for your time. Please do not hesitate to contact us directly if you have any questions. Indeed, don't hesitate to contact me personally. I'd be pleased to speak with you. Thank you.